Welcome to the Successful Woman Podcast, where we interview inspiring women from around the globe, each week taking you to the next level of your success. So welcome to the Successful Woman Podcast, and do we have a treat for you today? Because today I'm speaking with an incredible woman from the United States, but also a very dear friend. I just want to welcome to the podcast, Dr. Karen Hills Pruden. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, me too, Karen. Now, audience, If you haven't already heard about Dr. Karen, I just want to introduce a little bit about her to you. So she's a certified, award-winning, 26 times best-selling author. I just want to say that again, 26 times best-selling author, C-suite career elevation strategist for female managers seeking senior leadership. Initially, when clients come to her, they're stuck, they're stagnant, they're unhappy, they're unaligned, they're overworked, they're overwhelmed, and they're grossly underpaid, which is a huge issue for women all around the world in their corporate careers. But after working with Dr. Pruden and applying her various methodologies, which is in her book, which is incredible, by the way. The clients influence and impact their way to senior leadership while achieving organizational goals, because that's the thing. You have to be able to walk the walk as well as do the talk. Dr. Pruden transforms her life from a teenage bride to a global powerhouse, and we're going to hear a little bit more about that in a minute. And her blueprint is simple. No excuses, make it happen. (laughs) I love it. Just no excuses, make it happen, ladies. She currently works as Chief Human Resource Officer and Assistant Vice President in Higher Education. She's the CEO of the Sister Leaders Community, Sister Leaders Academy, and the Sister Leaders Conference, which happened at the end of last year. happens every year, an incredible conference in the United States. She's a graduate of Yale University Women's Leadership Program and Cornell University's Women's Entrepreneurship Program. Her lifetime goal is to assist as many women as possible to get to senior leadership. She lives the motto, sister leader. Dr. Karen, wow. Like I know you and I know that you're amazing. But after reading that, it's like, wow, welcome to the show. Um, Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here with you again. Once again, Joanna. Oh, I know. So I had the privilege of meeting Dr. Karen in Mississippi last year. And before we get into any questions about C-suite elevation and the strategies that women can employ, will you share just a little bit about your amazing story with the ladies online? Because if you haven't heard this before, this is a powerhouse of what is possible in life. So I'd love if you could just share a little bit about Teenage Bride to Global Powerhouse. How did you do it? Absolutely. So um, graduating from high school here in the U.S., from high school, you know, um, people are determining what their next stage in life is. And so as my friends went on to matriculate in college, I chose love. I got hit with that first love bug. And so I wanted to get married, be a wife, and I, I was consumed with the thought of that. And so as my friends went on to go to college, I myself um, went on to be a wife and eventually became a mother. And about five years into the marriage, um, the marriage um, was on a path to dissolvement. And so I found myself as a divorced um, mother of three children, three, two, and one at the time of my divorce, um, and having to reinvent myself and put myself back on um, whatever path it was for success. And I was college bound um, at the high school, and but I chose love over college. And so I put myself back on the path of college. And I went on and got my bachelor's and um, my master's and my PhD um, over the years. And I entered in corporate America. I started out as a frontline employee and I, um, my area expertise is human resources and organizational management. And so I worked every job that you can think of. And after being in corporate America for a little over a decade um, and having a succession of, I'll say, challenging bosses and interesting bosses, I thought that I could do 
um, a better job in leadership. And I was smart enough at the time to know that there's a difference between manager, middle, middle management manager, and senior leader. And so I was looking for someone to be um, a mentor or someone to tell me, you know, what do I need to focus on in order to get in senior leadership? But I didn't know anybody. And so I did what was unconventional at the time. This is about 15 years ago. I went on LinkedIn, did some research of female senior leaders in a vice president role who had been there in those roles for at least a decade, because not only was I interested in acquiring the role, I wanted to sustain the role for as long as I wanted the role. And so I um, did some research, found two individuals, sent them a copy of my resume, told them I was interested in senior management and looking for a mentor. One responded, which was my number one choice, and she said yes to the tune of $350 an hour. Now, listeners, $350 an hour was a lot of money to them, to me then. It's a lot of money to me now. Actually, if I lost $350 now, I would miss it. Um, but what do you do when someone has a playbook? to something that you want to acquire and you don't know anybody else. And so I buckled down. I signed a contract for one year, one hour a month. Um, she coached me over the phone and she helped me create a love for data analytics. Data analytics and storytelling are the two competencies that she added to my existing competencies of leading people, leading change, using technology and analytics. And after working with her for one year, I got the opportunity two months after that one year span to apply for a senior leadership position. And I have been in a senior leadership position since then. It's been going on 15 years. Wow. Congratulations. And there's so many things that come to mind as you share your story, Dr. Karen, from, you know, going through radical change, having three kids working and putting yourself through not just college but your master's and your PhD and then going out into the world of unknown and you know at the successful woman and I myself am a huge advocate for mentoring but you had the foresight to really step into a realm that was completely unknown and unformed and so you know and I can just imagine $350 15 years ago then for one hour a month, right? Really making that work. And I know from knowing you personally, I mean, you are a lady that implements what you learn. Uh, you definitely are somebody that's all about the follow through. You know, there's no fluff. If, if you say you're going to do something, you do something. But I can just imagine the dedication and the mental perseverance and the persistence and the resilience and all of these qualities that you must have applied to get to where you are now. And so what an amazing wealth of experience you have to share with other ladies, not just the practical skills and all the amazing things I need to know, but just you from being a woman that's risen and overcome so many things. Absolutely. And also, I hope that for those who have the privilege of learning about my journey, that um, people also learn the lessons of I, I had a good support mechanism. So it wasn't Karen alone, you know, with three babies, three, two and one. I mean, I had two that were in diapers. And then, then I talked about going back to college. You have to have a support system. But I also later in life was willing and able to invest in myself. And so I hope individuals take um, that lesson as well, that you are worth, you are good ground to invest in yourself, whether it's a certification, college, or just a class to help better yourself. You are truly worth it. And so I, there are a couple of life lessons that come um, with the things that I've been through, but I think we don't really think about it. We just do it a lot of times, but we can't do it alone. I mean, I would not been able to accomplish anything that I've done um, just with Karen. I have um, individuals who um, were willing to support me um, through this journey. That's wonderful you share that. And being, you know, the beginning of 2023, I guess the question for everybody listening is, 
who's in your support network. And if you don't have a strong support network or people around you that are going to support you in achieving your dreams, then time to get a new network <laughs> of people that can help you. But so let's jump into it because you've spoken with, I don't even know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of women in your time. But is there a, a, a pattern or a repeating theme that holds women back from this dream of entering the C-suite? And, and what is it and what are the solutions that you have to help women move through it? Yes, I don't believe that there is a lack of talent out there. I believe that there's a lack of knowledge of how to make that transition from management to leadership. Um, one who one may think that they are synonyms for one another, and they are not. Um, if as a manager, you're usually concerned about day-to-day -day activities, you may even be concerned about something that is going on next week. However, as a leader, I'm already planning three, four years down the road. Um, I'm also very in tune to all of my competition, brick and mortar, as well as online. Um, and so you have to pay attention to what everyone else is doing within the industry, even and while you're running your business or working within your business in corporate America. And so I believe that it's just a lack of what to focus on. Again, I was um, through my mentorship with um, the coach that I hired through LinkedIn she helped me acquire a knowledge of a love of analytics. My industry is HR. We are not a revenue generating industry. However, I add value to every organization. Every organization has an HR component, but I needed to know how to articulate my value. Once I was able to do that, that was a game changer for me. So I think it's a lack of information as to what to focus on that is stopping women who desire to be in the C-suite. And the C-suite is not necessarily a position that starts with the C per se. I happen to be a chief human resource officer, but depending on the size of your organization, it is the most, it's the highest position in your discipline within that organization. So it could very well be a, a director and it could be a manager depending on how big the organization is, but it is the highest in your discipline for your particular company. I love that. And, you know, the first thing that comes to mind when you talk about, you know, da data analytics is that that might be a little bit confronting for, for some people whose natural skill set is not either technology based or, you know, financial based, because that's the first thing that comes to mind. But what you're really talking about is the measurement of value. And how do you measure not only your value, but things that are valuable to the company that you're working in? And I mean, in your discipline, you know, people, people are the business, right? How you attract good talent, how you keep good talent, how talent progresses, how happy people are is, is, you know, really important to the success of a business, because at the end of the day, we're going through a really interesting time on the planet with AI coming in, and there's going to be all sorts of change. But at the heart of that, there still is always that need for human thinking. And so what you're really talking about is that changing that thinking within yourself, that future vision of seeing things, you know, three, four years out, the thinking of thinking wide and understanding the competition around you and, and the marketplace and how to position your business and give your value in terms of your thinking. Um, and I know definitely that is, a, for me, in my experience, that's been a big shift when you move from manager it's about, you know, the people and organizing the people, but a leader is about your thinking ability and all different types of thinking, right? Like strategic yeah. thinking, lateral thinking, creative thinking, analytical thinking. It's all yeah. about developing your thinking skills that the higher, the higher you get up. But so having worked with women in this transition, what's the personal characteristics that you feel a woman needs to really rock this, you know, to really hit that that echelon where you're moving forward in your career and you're you're leading other people. Is there a particular characteristic that stands out to you or is it a, a suite of things? You know, what do you think it would be? It, it, obviously, it's a suite of things, but I would say you have to believe that you can do it. Um, if you cannot see yourself in whatever that next position is for you, you will create self-imposed barriers that prevent you from elevating to that next position. So you have to be able to see 
yourself in that next position. And that comes with confidence. A lot of times confidence comes with experience, education, you know, just it just depends. Um, But confidence and the ability to see yourself where it is that you think that you want to go, I think is 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 number one and number two, Um, because if you can't envision it, then you won't you won't have a very easy path to get there because you'll think it's something that's unattainable. Um, confidence is number one. Then flexibility. You may envision yourself doing a front straight path to whatever your goal is, but a lot of times we reach our goals through lateral moves, you know, and people don't think about that. Everyone always think about a vertical move straight up, but a lot of people who've been in the game for a long time, I've been in my industry for 30 years. I made a couple of high visibility lateral moves that helped me go vertical quicker than if I stayed in that same place. So the ability to be flexible and then always know that you do not know everything that you need to know to get to your next position. So you have to always be an active listener to sometimes what is not being said or what hasn't been done so that you can fill in the blanks, whether you fill in the blanks with seeking out other individuals who have walked that path or whether you fill in the blanks through just educating yourself Um, and not always Google University. Sometimes it requires formal education, um, conversations with people who are currently working in within the industry um, so that you can get that deep, in-depth knowledge. Because a lot of times when people Google stuff, you may get the answer, but you don't get the pathway as to how people arrived at the answer. And that's what you need for sustainability. Amazing. So we've got confidence. (laughs) Which, you know, confidence for a woman is number one, right? Um, And that ability to really envision yourself. We've got flexibility and thinking about moving laterally, which is demonstrating lateral thinking in itself. And number three, filling in the blanks and being an active listener. And what I loved about what you just shared and the analogy for Google is that's a superficial understanding without really understanding the mechanics. It's like when I learned to drive a car, I learned to drive on a manual car. And now so many people get in a car, they're all automatic. They have no idea how gears work. They don't know what neutral is. They don't know how to do a a hill start. I'm showing my age, all of this sort of stuff. But, you know, I learned how to slow a car down using gears. So I learned the mechanics of that. And so what you're really saying is, go narrow, go deep in whatever it is. And so this is the perfect segue because I loved your book. (laughs) What I loved about it was there's so much in it, but it's so easy to read. So if you haven't already got a copy of uh, Dr. Karen's, it's, it's prudent principles. It's look, you know, I read it in a couple of hours because I actually wanted to stop and think about everything that you said, but principle number one, is my favorite, right? Generalists get credibility, specialists get the job. So, you know, that's what we're talking about, ladies, is don't go Google, go deep, right? And really make sure that you are the specialist. It's the, it's the first principle from, from your book. But Dr. Karen, we're going through an incredible time, right? I mean, there's been so many changes in business, the way we do business. I mean, in your sector, HR, people working from home, like what's the right balance of being in an office and being at your desk? But can you see with your wide vision and future vision, can you see any trends or patterns that women in the workplace really need to think about now, like to be prepared for now that you think are going to impact the changes in the way we work in the future? Well, I think um, the use of technology, it's it's been trending for the last 15 years. Um, It's STEM in our in, in all of our industries, science, technology, engineering, and math related is is embedded in every industry. You don't necessarily have to be an engineer. STEM related qualities are associated even in HR in every industry. And I think as a trend, um, because there is so much that's happening in terms of automation, that as a gender, that we need to not shy away from. Um, STEM related industries. Um, And then also be aware that STEM is embedded in every industry. And so with the um, move towards more automation, um, we need to um, sometimes shy away from front facing 
type of interaction. I know um, as women, um, we are usually excel in relationship building and different things like that. But also we need to get into automation and technology and how that is impacting the workforce and the skill set that is needed to operate and use automation and technology in every industry. It is in every industry. And a lot of times we don't think about those jobs that are there within our industry because we're so consumed with the, I'll call them traditional jobs as a front facing job, but STEM related jobs are in every industry. And that is where the money is. And that is where the growth is in the next 10 to 15 years. And, you know, I couldn't help but think that that takes us back to the first principle, right? Which is that if everything's being automated, the idea of being somebody that's on top of the data <laughs> is even more important now and understanding how is AI going to change not only who and when and how we do the work and the speed at which we do the work. I mean, I've been using like Jasper AI and Otter and all these incredible things that just, you know, flip what would have taken me an hour into literally a minute. So then the question is, how do you quantify that and how do you measure and what's the value of that for the organization? And are you across that within whatever your, whatever your discipline is? So it kind of loops back to your core principle, right? Which is mm -hmm. fall in love with data. Uh, because it's coming and you know maybe the initial fear of oh I'm not an uh, excel whiz isn't the main thing that you need to be focused on right now it's all of the other AI that's coming in and really getting familiar and comfortable with that yeah absolutely I mean look at how even the workforce has changed and and human resources um, years ago, you had to go into the office, fill out an application, get to know the receptionist, make sure the receptionist, receptionist remember your name. Now you can sit home in your pajamas and apply for a job that is across the, you know, across the ocean, you know, international. And you be, you can you can apply for a job um, that is international or national. You also can be interviewed virtually. So you never have to step foot in the state or the country that the job is. And you can receive a offer through your email with a comp competitive salary without even leaving your home. I mean, without even leaving your home. And that's something that was would have been unheard of, you know, 50, 60 years ago. And so that is because of the influx of technology and the use of technology. And that's that's in my area, human resources. But it has impacted every particular industry. Now, even actors, they send in their reel, you know, or you give them a link to your YouTube channel, or you give them a link to your Instagram, or you give them a link to whatever your website is for your audition tapes. You don't even have to set foot within that state or that country that is considering you for employment or for work. And so it broadens our reach. It means that we have we can take advantage of opportunities that are international as well as that are outside of our regional area nationally. Um, so it broadens our reach. I like that as well. But it also um, allows individuals to hear of you and your talent and what you have to offer in places that you may not ever have heard of. And so, yeah, we have to stay abreast of all of the forms of technology and how it enhances our particular industry. And that may require a little bit of research, but that research will pay off for you. I, I love that. And, you know, as you were speaking, one of the, well, I had two thoughts. The first one was, well, I hope that you get out of your pajamas for the actual interview, at least from the waist up, right? That was, that was my first thought. Yes. <laughs> but, but the second one was, you know, another thing I recall from your book was understanding that how the data is driving resume applications and even the words and how you put together the application is affecting your ability to be considered a successful candidate. So, you know, you can't just, you know, whack up any old resume and put it in, particularly not in the United States, because it's just not going to work for you. So, you know, really it's this understanding of data and technology and understanding how it works is from the, like the big, the macro, all the way down to the micro of what you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. That you um, hit it right, the nail right on it. Yep. Absolutely. 
So Dr. Karen, absolutely loved having time to, to share with you. And, you know, you're such a source of inspiration. I can personally vouch that, you know, for me, you know, you meet people in life that really walk the walk and you are definitely one of those women for me. And I've loved, you know, just from the six months that I've known you, um, watching your journey and how you continue to expand yourself and how you're continually giving back and the work you're doing with the sister leaders is just incredible. So if you're listening to this and you haven't already connected with Dr. Karen, or if you need support or help in working out your strategy to get to the next level of where you want to be within your corporate or business career, how can the ladies find you? What's the best way to contact with you? Absolutely. So I have a free Facebook community and it's actually called Sister Leaders Community. And there you will find, um, I, I have um, subject matter expert speakers that come in there for free. I post um, international jobs up, up there. I um, give a lot of free information, worksheets and um, different decks of information that I've created. Um, and then I also talk about the various um, conferences and retreats and different things that I do. And I love to write. I'm actually up to my 30th book now, Joanna. And so <laughs> everything that I write about is about women overcoming and women elevating in their chosen career. Um, and so it's a the sister leaders community is a group of men and women who are committed to increasing the number of women in senior leadership. And so we have some awesome male ambassadors who support women numbers, women numbers um, increasing in senior leadership. And so connect to my community and you will find out all things Dr. Karen. So that community is in Facebook groups and it is a free community, Sister Leaders with a S community. Amazing. And, you know, you raised something really important and it's something very dear to my heart is, you know, the, the advancement of women really does include the engagement of men. And, and I think we're at a very key time as we look to which kind of communities we want to connect with. Because when you're excluding men, you're actually avoiding the issue. And I think that, you know, that's very relevant that, that you raise. So a wonderful resource for all of you. If you haven't already, jump online, join the community, because there's all sorts of interesting, you know, value, resources, people, content, opportunities in there, right? So make sure that you do that. So Dr. Karen, thank you so, so much for your time. I cannot wait to connect with you again, whether it be online or again in person. Um, just one last thing, any pearls of wisdom for the ladies listening today and men that might be listening that might help them think about how to make that shift in their thinking? Absolutely. And so if you have... Um have purchased anything of value that appreciates in value, there is this term called equity. And so I have coined this term called professional equity, and it has three legs. It has your reputation, your relationships, and your area expertise. And so what I would encourage everyone who's under the sound of my voice to do is to make sure that you cultivate your relationships up and down, uh, up and down the chain, um, and if you are an entrepreneur, make sure you cultivate your relationships to make sure that they're on the positive side with your vendors, your volunteers, um, and your employees. Also, in terms of your reputation, your, re your reputation is not your title. It is the results that you generate in the marketplace. And so be mindful of your reputation. And then, of course, your area expertise. If you do not have an area of expertise, then find out what it is that you do well and what it is that people respect you for and use that to push your way through various doors so that you can use that area of expertise, what is needed. Those three elements are called professional equity and they will, you can use those elements during times where there are challenging times in the marketplace from an economic standpoint or challenging times in corporate from where they're trying to pick between you and employee B. Sustaining yourselves throughout uncertain times. 
I love it. Relationships, reputation, and your expertise. Well, with that, I think we've summed it up really well. So for all of you online, make sure that you connect with Dr. Karen. And if you haven't already, get a copy of the book because there's so much good stuff in here for you to learn that will help you with your journey. And so be sure to tune in next time. Dr. Karen, thank you so much. And tune in next time when we have another incredible lady coming to talk to you about what it takes to be a successful woman. And with that, we will say good night.